Markets reacting the way you'd expect to sort of this latest news on trade? I, th I think so. I mean, that's kind of what they've been doing, David. Uh, any any tweet, any good news that goes up and vice versa, we might get more of that before we get to the meetings in October. But there is some other good things going on here, I think. Not, not only the good trade news, but the fact that bond yields have shown a propensity to rise again, I think, uh, shows a, a, a big vote of confidence coming from the bond market, which is healthy for stocks, too. Even this morning, there's still a really close relationship between the direction of that 10-year yield and the direction of the stock market, just tick for tick. I also think, you know, uh, economic surprise indices around the globe have picked up. They certainly have here in the United States, but they also have in emerging world in China and Europe. So that, that kind of fresh upside economic momentum, I think, is starting to cause uh, recession fears to fade a bit. So uh, I think it's uh, more than just about the trade news. It's got some more yeah. fundamental support going on. Well, the uh, president is focused on some of his tweets, of course, on Fed rates, on global uh, rates, negative rates, currency exchange. I mean, Jim, uh, we should mention, by the way, the German 10-year bun sort of back to where it was before we got the ECB news in terms of a cut there. Sovereign yields kind of also seem to be evening out to your point. Are we done? Are we seen the lows, do you think, in yields in terms of U.S. Treasury so far? <laughs> I, I don't know. That's the million-dollar question. I, I kind of think there's, you know, uh, a possibility of that, uh, David, in that, as I said, some of the economic data has started to improve uh, here. And I think people's attitude about recession is starting to change as well. And, you know, look at that. Look at that core inflation rate this morning. CPI went to uh, the highest level of this entire recovery, 2.4 percent. It's kind of hard to see a, you know, a 150 10 year again with some elements of inflation, including wage inflation, staying pretty strong. And then if the real data picks up uh, here and, and across the globe, uh, I, I kind of think uh, we might be starting on a little change of character, not only in bond yields, but also in leadership in the stock market. Samir, I understand you're focused fairly closely on what the Fed may or may not do here coming up, though we largely do expect a bit of a cut. Uh, Jim there saying he thinks that perhaps some of the recession fears have been put on the back burner. How are you feeling right now about the U.S. economy going into this Fed meeting? Sure. So, you know, at least on an expectations basis, I mean, it's clear now to see that people probably got a little too bared up. Uh, you know, we, we were there, you know, in the fourth quarter of last year, too. And, you know, the way expectations work is eventually reality starts to, to outperform. Um, the tricky part is, unfortunately, you do still have a lot of headwinds. Um, you know, a lot of the PMIs, a lot of business confidence is still very low. Um, small business confidence yesterday to ticked down. Consumer confidence has started to roll over just a little bit. So we would probably be more in the cautious camp. There are some good things going on, but the market's also 200 base points, you, know, you know, 200 points off its lows and you've got yields you know about 30 or so base points higher which has kind of been the the april and july moves um it's right in line with that so we would say at this point uh, it's probably a good time to kind of rein in some of the, the stock exposure and maybe at least look um at some of those longer duration fixed income instruments hey jim you mentioned uh, what rates have been doing got stocks near record got core inflation claims can powell get away with holding steady next week <laughs> I think that'd create a firestorm, Carl, if he, if he held steady. I, I think the market would well, then, uh, How does he justify problem it? With that. I think that's tough. I think he's in an interesting position uh, because uh, I, I think the data is pretty good here, particularly in the United States. Uh, I know there's still manufacturing weakness, but much of the rest of it is doing well. And even the leadership shift here just in the last few days towards small caps and cyclicals away from defensive stocks, bond markets uh, seeing better growth. Uh, credit spreads have come in. Uh, I think it's a tough case to make to cut, except we still got a massive inversion in the yield curve. And that, that it, in and of itself can create enough fear, to Samir's point, to freeze up confidence and, and create a confidence freeze recession. So I think there, the, if I was the Fed, I'd say we're dropping rates not because for fundamental reasons, but because we're going to try to take that curve inversion out and restore some confidence uh, among the private sector. Uh, Samir, can they do that and just say, uh, but you better like it because that's all you're going to get for now? You know, there's just no need for them to do that. You know, I think they'll probably say, you know, look, we're, we're cutting because there are risks to the outlook and, you know, this rate cut is warranted. And I think they'll probably just say that, you know, look, we'll remain data dependent. For them to at this point, you know, maybe kind of like let the cat out of the bag and talk about maybe remaining patient from this side of things, I don't know. It's probably a little bit premature. I mean, if they do it, it could be another unforced error.